STS-95 was a Space Shuttle mission launched from Kennedy Space Center, Florida on 29 October 1998, using the orbiter Discovery. It was the 25th flight of Discovery and the 92nd mission flown since the start of the Space Shuttle program in April 1981. It was a highly publicized mission due to former Project Mercury astronaut and United States Senator John H. Glenn Jr.'s return to space for his second space flight. At age 77, Glenn became the oldest person, to date, to go into space. This mission is also noted for inaugurating ATSC HDTV broadcasting in the U.S., with live coast-to-coast -coast coverage of the launch. In another first, Pedro Duque became the first Spaniard in space. The mission's objectives involved investigating life sciences experiments, using the SpaceHab module to perform these experiments on Senator Glenn. Scientific objectives on this mission were not limited to furthering an understanding of the human body, but also to increase astronomical understanding with regards to the Sun, and how it affects life on Earth. The Spartan 201 spacecraft was released by the crew, flying free from the shuttle, studying the acceleration of the solar wind that originates in the Sun's solar corona. The mission lasted just under 10 days, with Discovery completing its voyage by landing at the Kennedy Space Center's shuttle landing facility. The launch was rare in that the official launch weather forecast provided by the 45th Weather Squadron was 100% for favorable weather for launch as well as the shuttle landing facility. Bill Clinton became the second incumbent U.S. president to witness a rocket launch, joined by his wife Hillary on the roof of the Vehicle Assembly Building, and the only one to attend a shuttle launch. President Richard Nixon witnessed the launch of Apollo 12. Topic Crew Topic Crew seating arrangements Topic Mission highlights The primary objectives included conducting a variety of science experiments in the pressurized SpaceHab module, the deployment and retrieval of the Spartan free flyer payload, and operations with the HST Orbital Systems Test host and the International Extreme Ultraviolet Hitchhiker IEH payloads carried in the payload bay. Topic: <laughs> SpaceHab The SpaceHab module flown on STS-95 was provided by SpaceHab, Inc., a private company. The SpaceHab system provided additional pressurized workspace for experiments, cargo and crew activities. SpaceHab modules supported various shuttle science missions along with several of the joint shuttle Mir missions. For STS-95, a single-module SpaceHab flew in the forward portion of Discovery's payload bay, with the crew gaining access to the module through the airlock tunnel system. A variety of experiments sponsored by NASA, the Japanese Space Agency and the European Space Agency focused on life sciences, microgravity sciences and advanced technology during the flight. Topic. Spartan The Spartan 201-5 free flyer was deployed and retrieved using the shuttle's mechanical arm. It was designed to investigate physical conditions and processes of the hot outer layers of the Sun's atmosphere, or solar corona. While deployed from the shuttle, Spartan gathered measurements of the solar corona and solar wind. NASA expected that information collected during this mission would lead to a much better understanding of the solar winds that directly influence orbiting satellites and weather conditions on Earth which in turn impact television and phone communications. This was the fifth flight for the Spartan payload. It originally flew on the STS-56 mission in April 1993. On its previous mission, STS-87 in November 1997, Spartan developed problems shortly after being deployed from the shuttle and had to be brought back into the shuttle's payload bay by spacewalk. 
These problems were due with the attitude control system for fine pointing towards solar targets, and Spartan was cleared for use again on STS-95. Its mission was to successfully perform the same experiments from the previous year. Topic: <laughs> Host. The Hubble Space Telescope Orbital Systems Test Host platform carried experiments to validate components planned for installation during the third Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission and to evaluate new technologies in an Earth orbiting environment. There were four experiments on the host platform. The NICMOS cooling system allowed for zero-G verification of a reverse turbocharged Brayton cycle cooler, which allowed for longer life operation than the DUA system used on Hubble at the time. The HST-486 computer allowed for the identification of any radiation-susceptible parts in the DF-224 replacement computer to be carried on the third servicing mission, and demonstrate hardware and software responses to single-event upsets use. A solid-state recorder compared on-orbit operation of the flight spare solid-state recorder with the unit installed in Hubble. A fiber-optic line test used the same 4 kilobits per second data stream that was sent to the orbiter's payload data interrogator and routed to a laptop computer for post-flight comparison. IEH. The International Extreme Ultraviolet Hitchhiker IEH payload involved a half dozen different experiments mounted on a support structure which was carried in Discovery's payload bay. The six experiments that made up the IEH payload were the Solar Extreme Ultraviolet Hitchhiker payload, which obtained EUV and FUV fluxes that are required when studying the Earth's upper atmosphere, an ultraviolet spectrograph telescope for astronomical research payload designed to measure EUV fluxes which could be used to form images of extended plasma sources X. Jupiter, hot stars, etc., the starlight payload which made observations of extended and diffused astrophysical targets, the CONCAPIV payload designed to grow thin films via physical vapor transport, the Petite Amateur Navy Satellite PANSAT payload which was managed by the Department of Defense Space Test Program, and involved a small deployable satellite that stored and transmitted digital communications to PANSAT ground stations, and again Getaway special gas payload. Topic: <inaudible> Medical experiments on Glenn. According to the New York Times, Glenn won his seat on the shuttle flight by lobbying NASA for two years to fly as a human guinea pig for geriatric studies, which were named as the main reasons for his participation in the STS-95 mission. This series of experiments conducted on Glenn during the mission was sponsored by NASA and the National Institute on Aging, and based on the fact that the aging process and a space flight experience share a number of similar physiological responses. The investigations were expected to gather information which may provide a model system to help scientists interested in understanding aging. Some of these similarities include bone and muscle loss, balance disorders and sleep disturbances. Shortly before the flight, researchers learned that Glenn had to be disqualified from another of the flight's two main priority human experiments about the effects of melatonin because he did not meet one of studies' medical conditions. He still participated in two other experiments about sleep monitoring and protein use. Data provided from Glenn during this mission was compared to data obtained from Glenn's Friendship 7 orbital mission in 1962. Trivia In addition to becoming the oldest person to fly into space, Glenn also became the third sitting member of Congress to do so. He was preceded by Utah Senator Jake Garn STS 51D and Florida Representative later Senator Bill Nelson STS 61C. At the time, Glenn was Ohio's senior or ranking senator. 
Other astronauts who later entered politics include Harrison Schmidt, Apollo 17, later senator from New Mexico, and Jack Swigert, Apollo 13, who was elected to Congress in Colorado but died before being sworn in. In a reprise of his first space flight, while in orbit, Glenn was greeted again by the citizens of Perth and Rockingham in Australia. They left their private and municipal lights on while the Discovery passed overhead, just like they did during his Friendship 7 flight. <laughs> Crew award The crew of STS-95 was awarded the Space Foundation's Douglas S. Morrow Public Outreach Award in 1999. The award is given annually to an individual or organization that has made significant contributions to public awareness of space programs. Anomalies <inaudible> 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 The drag chute door detached and fell from the orbiter at main engine ignition. There was some concern that the drag chute could deploy prematurely prior to touchdown, and the decision was made not to use the chute during landing rollout. Wheel brakes and speed brakes were sufficient to bring Discovery to a stop on runway 33 at the shuttle landing facility, and RCS leak venting from a thruster on the left-hand OMS pod was observed in orbit. An isolation valve was used to disable the jet. Attitude control was maintained by system redundancy. There were 44 jets located around the orbiter. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Inaugural HDTV broadcast. The American Advanced Television Systems Committee ATSC HDTV system had its public launch during the live coverage of the lift-off. The signal was transmitted coast to coast, and was seen by the public in science centers, and other public theaters specially equipped to receive and display the broadcast. The broadcast was made possible by the Harris Corporation, which sponsored the equipment necessary for transmitting and receiving the broadcast. The broadcast was hosted by former CBS News anchor Walter Cronkite, and former Gemini, Apollo-era astronaut Pete Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> Wake-up calls NASA had begun a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program, which was first used to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen and often has a particular meaning to an individual member of the crew, or it is somehow applicable to their situation. <laughs> Mission insignia The STS-95 mission insignia was designed by the crew, and evokes the scientific, engineering and historic elements of the flight. It depicts a stylized blue space shuttle with yellow, red, and blue streamers coming from its stern that represent the global benefits of the mission science experiments and the solar science objectives of the Spartan satellite. A small Mercury space capsule is depicted orbiting the shuttle, and the red streamer extends up towards the center of the shuttle to form a seven. The capsule and the number 7 are in reference to Glenn's historic association with the Mercury 7 astronauts and their spacecraft. All of the manned Mercury spacecraft had 7 as part of their name. The mission payloads microgravity material science, medical research for humans on Earth and in space, and astronomy represent three major scientific fields and are symbolized in the insignia by rocket plumes. See also John H. Glenn, Jr. List of human spaceflights List of Space Shuttle missions Mercury Atlas 6 Outline of space science